what you're about to experience are my opinions and truths. I'm suggesting their possibilities for you to consider, in which you can then come up with your own logical conclusions. Good day or evening to everyone out there in the decoding world. My name is Logan and this is Decode Your Reality. And today we're going to be breaking down and decoding the character called Azazel. This will be Azazel Decoded. And on the front of this graphic are renditions from the movie X-Men First Class, which I hope that you've seen. It's got a lot of clues in it, I believe, but a lot of movies do. But the depiction of this guy who is a straight-up stone-cold killer. A straight-up stone-cold killer, and, you know, you get into the movie itself and... You know what it's all about and what they uh you know portray this character working for kevin bacon and the bad guys of course and he's a super villain what does this all mean well then you can bring into the the comic books where the origination of the theater part and you get into the topic of the super villain and of course he is a mutant with the power of teleportation teleportation and we're going to get into that and then of course kind of the origination of that story if you go back even more it's in the old testament the torah and azazel being the scapegoat now folks i want you to think about that word scapegoat and of course goat when you link in astrology and syncretize that you're going to get into capricorn which means earth, the ruler of the earth, but it's the scapegoat bearing the sins. A lot of clues. And then you can go back even further into the book of Enoch and the fallen angels. And we're gonna get into all that folks and syncretize it and tie it all together during this decode. This is gonna be fun. But here are the topics of conversation that we're going to be discussing during this presentation. In the zero position, of course, the intro, which is what I'm doing now. I always want to include the zero. In the number one position, we're going to be breaking down a little bit of the X-Men. Number two, of course, we're going to be breaking down that word teleportation because that was the main characteristic besides him being a stone cold killer. And what has that got to do with this whole story about the angels and the watchers and teleportation? Well, you're gonna find out. Number three, we're gonna get into a movie called The Crow. What does The Crow have to do with Azazel? You're gonna find out on that. Number four, we're gonna break down the character, who played the character. And folks, this is where, again, once again, I will show that there's no way man is being used to play out their part the, the blueprint and script called the game of life was already written and then man incarnates and fulfills the script there's no other way to explain what i'm about to show you during this presentation in the number five position we're going to break down the watchers we're going to break down the watchers and i misspelled that so my apologies and then of course number six Love to hear what you saw during this 
presentation. So, folks, here we go in the number one position, the X-Men. Think about, you know, the letter X, folks, it's the 24th letter in the alphabet linking to our X chromosomes, and we're going to get into that. It's tied to the four faces of the God character in the biblical sense, the ox, lion, eagle, and man, and then those are the four fixed signs of astrology, which is Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. The four fixed signs, four fixed faces. And I'm not going to be breaking down too much of the movie, folks, but this, was, this is going to tie into what I'm about to show you. The running time of this movie was 132 minutes. Now, again, folks, you got to start using common sense and logic to, to discover really how this code is expressing itself. Now, I can see man trying to fiddle around with the running times. But, you know, do you realize how much just to go, goes into that to get the movie exactly where you want it to be? You'd have to be cutting scenes and, folks... It's just, I don't think there's enough time to be able to even do this on a conscious level. So when you bring in the string of pi with this number 132 tied to the running minutes of this movie, notice where it appears. It starts at the 110th decimal digit of pi. It occupies 110, 111, and 112, but it starts at the number 110. And I'm going to be showing that. Now, I can get into a lot more of the other pieces of the movie, folks. I want to get to the bread and butter of this. Here is Azazel in the English. Clearly, you can see it's a number 71, and that is linked to this element right here. Now, again, why? You know, if, you, this is, if you're new to this, like, why would I be bringing numerology and tying that into the elements of the periodic table? Because, see, folks, these elements which can be found at the Royal Society of Chemistry, which is right here. And here are the 118 known elements that we know of to the public. And all these have little clues, little pictures, who discovered them, what the weights are, the numbers. The numbers end up matching up to the string of pi. We can go and measure in the string. All these things become syncretized together. That's why we use them. These are bridges and they tell us a story. Now, this is really interesting, this element, because if you notice the number, it's 174. It's tied to the number 71, the protons of this element called lutetium, tied to Azazel through the English. And what other word kind of starts with the letter L-U? How about Lucy? How about Lucifer? Now, to bring this all together, you see this number 174? It's not a secret to look up Manly P. Hall and his secret, secret teachings of all ages and to see that Mr. Manly P. Hall said that the number of Lucifer is number 741. It's right there. Lucifer is represented by the number 741. Now, does it mean that Manly P. Hall is, is he correct? Is he right? Does this have any relevance? Well, folks, you see, when you syncretize these things, clearly, what other way are we to observe this and make sense of all this element 71? And the reason why I have the rainbow here is because how many colors are there in a rainbow? Seven. Red through violet. There it is, 71. It's, it's pretty crystal clear right there. And then Lucifer starts off with the two letters, L and U. And if we're to syncretize what Manly P. Hall said, the great Freemason of Lucifer's numbers being 741, well, there they are right there. So we're on to something now, folks. We're making sense of all this kind of stuff. And then when you bring in the mirror of the 71, you get this element called chlorine and this number 34. And we can go on to more things if we wanted to syncretize that. But, you know, remember, 71 
and 17. When you add up seven plus one, it's eight. When you add up one plus seven is eight. That brings you to the number 88. And 88 is the number that Marty McFly had to get to the DeLorean in Back to the Future to time travel. And that's what this character is all about, folks. Teleportation. It's the hypothetical transfer of matter or energy from one point to another. Teleportation. Time travel. You see, all, those, all this syncretizes. And it perhaps tells us the reality of the story. And maybe there's some sense to this story of this stone cold killer that's portrayed in the movies and the comics. And, in, in, and he's the, it's the scapegoat the goat in the biblical sense, the killer, the goat. So let's get into that teleportation. What does that got to do with anything? Folks, this is kind of where it gets really bizarre. And this is why I say that man could never code this kind of stuff. Cause we're going to bring in pieces that have absolutely nothing to do with killing, but they have everything to do with teleportation. So here's the description of the teleportation and Azazel through what I found online. And Azazel is able to transport himself physically across great distances, giving him the appearance of being vaporized into a very brief puff of red smoke or gas, which appears wherever he teleports to or from. Now, folks, if you understand alchemy, and you go back to these elements. All of these have melting points and what temperature they return to when they boil and turn into a gas. It's really interesting. And if you bring in the sense of human beings being light beings slow down from the spirit or soul into physical matter, well, the temperature would go down and we become physical matter like lead. It's really interesting when you syncretize this stuff. <clears throat> so that's what his, this, this character's power is, to be able to teleport to different places in an instant and be that stone cold killer. So here's why I say it gets super interesting and how I know that man could never code anything like this. Here's the guy who came up with the actual topic or word. He coined it teleportation. Charles Hoy Fort. You can go and do a little bit of research on it if you're interested. Charles Hoy Fort. Now, even Charles, when you break that down in numerology, folks, Charles is going to give you, keep your eye on that Chaldean, is going to give you the number 22, which is the element called titanium right here. What is titanium? The Titans. It's Saturn's moon, Titan. And then you get into Greek mythology. So the story takes on a whole different dynamic now, just based upon... Azazel and the guy who came up with teleportation, which is what Azazel is known for. Here's the guy's full numerology as an output of the number 56. The subtleties, of course, there's pi, 3.14. 14 is linked to the word time. It's linked to the word God. It's linked to the word Satan. It's all in there, folks. This guy's numerology is the number 56. And when you plug that into the string of pi, it appears at the number 74. And of course, we know what 74 is. It's tungsten. And what is tungsten, folks? Tungsten is called the wolf. It's called wolfram. Tungsten is known as illumination. It gets really interesting, folks, when you syncretize this. And of course, the big key to all this is his name is a match to the word he coined. 
Now, do you think it's possible that Charles was sitting down with numerology and he was a fan of the occult and the esoteric and said, you know, I'm going to call it teleportation because my name equals the number 56. That's possible. But then you'd have to go all the way back to his parents because his parents decided to, to, to name him Charles Hoy Fort. And you'd have to bring them into the conspiracy that what they're talking about to make all of this work. Folks, it's just not possible. It's just not. The little subtleties he passed at the age of 57, the Truman Show equals the number 57. Stairway to Heaven equals the number 57. And then, you know, re remember that Jesus equals 74, just like Lucifer equals 74. Now, how about that number 56 and that word teleportation that Charles coined, which is all linking to Azazel? Well, it has two ways to branch off using the elements of the periodic table. Number one, looking to your right, it's this element right here called barium, and it means heavy. We know what the number 137 is. This is the most abundant weight of barium. 137 is the 33rd prime number. Here is the original spelling through the Greek. That's where this name barium came from. There it is. It's linked to the number 64. What is 64? That's the element gadolinium, which is otherwise known as the GD element. It was used to make television screens telling you the vision of what to see. It's the GD element. How many possible codons in our DNA? 64. How many squares on a chessboard? 64. Notice the average atomic weight of gadolinium, 157. You go right back to this guy who coined teleportation and the guy passes at the age of 57. These are subtleties, folks, but you can't leave them out because this whole entire world that we live in is completely scripted down to everything. There's nothing that's left out. So is that what this is telling us? Teleportation, the transfer of matter from one place to another, this would be matter because we're 64. 64 is tied to our DNA. When you bring in the layer here to the left, it's iron. 56, the weight of iron. One of the weights is 56. This is isotope 56. Well, it would be 55, but it's 50, isotope 56 tied to teleportation. What is 26? It's the G-O-D, folks. And of course, this is tied to the yod heh vah the female. That's what this means, by the way. Feminine. The yod heh vah the god of the Bible, which I have a feeling is tied right into this Azazel character, Probably one and the same came out in the Iron Age. So, you know, folks, here's another layer that we can add on to Charles's whole dynamic. And just to support what I'm saying, that all I'm showing you is the code written called the Game of Life, and man's not writing it. Man is just playing it out. You have your part in life, and you're playing it out. That's why the most important thing that each and every one of us can do is to discover your code. Know your astrology, numerology, life path, human design, enneagram, personality type, your color code. There are so many dynamics to you as a person, and that will tell you your instruction manual. That what, we're, what I'm showing you is this guy's instruction manual. Why he discovered the word teleportation and how he's tied to Azazel. I mean, look at this, folks. He was born on August 6th. So here's another layer bringing in the cards of illumination. And let me go to the boilerplate chart just so we can be really transparent. Here is August. The 12 months run along the top. The 31 days run along the left side of the chart. This is a boilerplate chart. Your birthday is going to be in here. But here's Charles Hoyt, August Six. There it is. Row six. It's the seven diamonds card. 
The seven diamonds card is the 33rd card in the deck. Let me show you that. Here are the natural lineages of the cards. And here is the seven of diamonds, card number 33. So how about that, folks? This guy was born on August 6th. He coined teleportation. He's born with a card, the seven diamonds, which is the 33rd card. And here's where it gets it, folks. When did the Christ die? 33. And here it is, folks. Jesus equals 74. Lucifer equals the number 74, both tied to this element called arsenic. There it is. There's the 74 and 33. It's right there. You can't miss it. These are bridges telling us the story of how this code is expressing itself. So it's either Lucifer and Jesus are two separate components or they're one and the same. They're either good cop, bad cop, or they're the same cop. In the story sense. Folks, man's being used. I don't know how many more times I need to describe this to people, but some people are catching on. Some people are really just not willing to accept that. That's totally fine. I'm not here to force anything upon you. Here it is in pie, folks. Look at where the number 86, which is this guy's birth. August 6 is 8 slash 6, 8. Look at where it appears. 74th decimal digit. Think about what I'm showing you here, folks, logically with your common sense to bring all these layers in here. And again, folks, are we trying to mock anybody? No. Does this have anything to do with killing people in real life? And being a mercenary and tying you tying to these groups that everybody keeps blaming does this has anything to do with these groups it has nothing to do with them yet these patterns keep emerging in the code over and over and this guy eight six in the string of pi is tied to the 74 you go right back to his name 56 and it's tied to the 74 they just swap how's that possible folks tied to the word he coined Tied to what this character is all about, teleportation. How is that possible, folks? And then tied to that 74 with Lucifer. How is this possible, folks? How else are we to describe this? Other than this is how the code is expressing itself. This is the software that was written. We live inside of a computer. But it's a real life situation. But the computer's code this is what you're seeing as the code. And it's so tightly woven, that's why we're able to piece all these components together. Well, I got way more. Wait till I keep showing you, folks. Here's where it gets interesting. I mean, if your jaw isn't on the floor already, well, I mean, I don't know what else is needed to do to impress you. But again, I'm not trying to impress you. I'm just trying to show you what, what I found through my research. I do a lot of research, folks. Azazel is a number 24 through the Chaldean. And that's a link to the number 24 through the English because the letter X is the 24th letter. This is why I prefer to use these two over any other ciphers, folks. How many letters do we have in the English alphabet? 26. What's 2 plus 6? 8. Folks, it always comes back to the number 8. So I feel these two ciphers in numerology are closest to the source code. And you should base your findings off these two ciphers and then get into more advanced ciphers if you can get a, a base foundation built. But there it is clearly, folks. 24. How many hours in a day? 24. X. X and Y chromosomes. X-Men, Mutants, Azazel. So let's get into, what is the, have you ever seen the movie The Crow, folks? What does that have to do with anything? This movie right here, starring Bruce Lee's son, Brandon Lee, who died on the set of this movie. 1994, this movie came out. What does this have to do with Azazel and the X and teleportation? 
Let's break it down, folks. Let me show you why I'm including this. I didn't plan on including it when I was decoding Azazel. It just popped up. It led me to the discovery of this. There it is, folks. You see, using another layer that has, is a... Comp folks, these are called the medicine cards, by the way, if you're new to this. And in, in the tarot or the cards of illumination, you know, in the cards of illumination, the typical polka deck, there's 52 cards matching the 52 weeks. In these medicine cards... Let me show you the breakdown of those. Here they are. There are 52 cards in this deck. And instead of using symbols, it uses animals, reptiles, and insects. There it is. The 24th card is the crow card. Folks, these were designed and released in 1988. Notice that number 88. Now, do you think the people that were Native American that created this deck actually sat down with the esoteric and kind of looked at other layers to try to syncretize what I'm about to show you? Maybe. Do you think they were sitting down and they were like, you know, we got to syncretize this guy, Azazel, and make the crow card number 24? Because it's got a match to Azazel. Do you think that's possible? Or do you think I'm completely off basis of what I'm saying? And I'm being facetious. The crow is one of the smartest birds known to man, besides the raven, the crow. And if you know the crow medicine, if you go study the crow medicine, it'll give you a lot more clues. But there's this crow movie tied to Azazel. And if you really go back and look, let me show you that. If you haven't seen this movie lately, maybe you should go watch it. But it's all about this guy being killed, Brandon Lee. Well, actually, yeah, he gets killed and his fiance gets killed and raped. and So he comes back from the dead. And he has this crow that's following him around. And what he can do is see through the eyes of that crow. And we're going to get into that. But here's another layer that we can syncretize it to. And I'm going somewhere with this, folks, so stick with me. Crow is tied to chromium. This element right here, the 24... Think about this, folks. I want you to think about this. Science named it chromium. Chromium, when you go to the Royal Society of Chemistry and you look at this 24th element... It was discovered in the year 1798. The name is from Greek. It means color. 1798. Look at the name of who discovered it. Nicholas. Nicholas. Old Saint Nick. Nicholas. And chromium has the word crow in it. Do you think the people that created these cards in 1988 were sitting down with the periodic table and said, we got to call it chromium because it's got the word crow in it? Maybe. But then you'd have to syncretize all these other layers that I'm about to show you, folks. It would be impossible. It's not possible. Man is just expressing the code. Way too many people on different levers, different numbers, different years, different things developed, established. We're made up of colors, are we not? Chromium. We're made up of colors. That's what it means. Crow, the crow. So you bring this guy, Brandon Lee. And was Brandon Lee Azazel? Because he ends up going and killing the people that took his girlfriend from him. And getting retribution. Notice that Brandon Lee was born on February 1st, which is this card right here called the Jack Spades. Let me show you that. Here's, hold on a sec. What am I, where was I going with that? February 1st. There it is. So here's February 1st, Jack Spades right there. Brandon Lee. It's card number 50. Let me show you that. Just being really transparent. Here it is. Jack Spades, card 50. Brandon Lee being born on this day of February 1st, having this card number 50, 
is tied to this movie called The Crow. That's who he played. And the tie-in, folks, is this right here, this word in numerology. Chromosomes. 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 Crow. Chromosomes. It's the 50. This is the 50th card, folks. Tied to this guy's birth who played the crow. Chromosomes. Folks, do you see the connections and how it would be absolutely impossible for man to code this before it even happens? There are way too many moving parts. You got to use your common sense and logic. How about his alchemology? What is alchemology? If you're new to this, it's taking numerology, getting the numbers from the letters, and then matching those with the elements on the periodic table. So Brandon Bruce Lee has 15 letters. I couldn't fit them all here, but you can fact check all this. You can do them all. Two is helium. Two is helium. One is hydrogen, boron. So I got his first name here, but I didn't put Bruce and Lee. But if you want to go fact check that, go ahead. Here are they all added up in the trusty calculator. His alchemology, numerology, and the alchemy of that. Look at what it becomes, folks. It's not just a number 121, but there is the 121 in a different fashion, but still expressing itself. It's an even match. It's got two ones and two twos. Or four ones and two twos. 121 which was the outcome of his alchemology, is tied to this element right here called antimony, which is tied to the all-seeing eye of Horus. Now, what's fascinating about this, folks, is when you go and do the numerology of antimony, keep your eyes on that Chaldean right there. It's a number 28. Antimony is the all-seeing eye which is a direct match of this guy's name right here called Lucifer. That's a number 28. So is it safe to say that Lucifer is the all-seeing eye of Horus? Matching this to antimony? Because when you go to antimony, folks, let's be really transparent. Here it is. Antimony is element number 51. There it is. And they use the... Why'd they use this? The Royal Society of Chemistry. Because you see the history of it was that the Egyptians used to put antimony sulfide under their eyes as mascara to darken their eyes. Makeup. And the name comes from this Greek word antimonos, which means not alone. Think about this for a second. Think about what this is saying right here, folks. Antimony means not alone. And this guy has an outcome of antimony through his name and his alchemology? How about that? Not only that, folks, but his total is 57. What was Charles Hoyt, the guy who invented teleportation, what was his death, day, death age? 57. See, folks, subtleties, but they're all tied together in the code. So this is where it gets really interesting. The all-seeing eye. Folks, he plays the crow. And this crow... Here's it right from the movie. It's the all-seeing eye, folks. It allows him to see throughout the air. It allows him to go in and see to find the people he's going to kill in this movie called The Crow. The all-seeing eye, folks. That's what this movie's about. So you can see all the layers, folks. They would have to cast this guy. They would have to know about alchemology. They would have to know his name ties to the all-seeing eye. They would have to know that his name is tied to chromosomes and the crow. And his name's tied to the 50th card, which is tied to chromosomes. Folks, it's not possible for man to code this. We are living out a script that was already written before each and every one of us got here. That's the way this works. Reality works. Folks, look at the where in the string of pi. His alchemology is 121, folks. There it is in the string of pi. Look at where it appears at the 710th decimal digit of pi. 
You just drop that zero, there's the 71, folks. What are the odds of that being the case? There it is, folks. Think about it using your common sense. Think about it. This is a movie. The crow, the all-seeing eye, he's able to see with it. There it is. This is a direct snapshot of him looking through the crow's eyes at the people that killed his girl. This, this, this is a girl and, and, and a boyfriend in bed. I mean, here's the confirmation right there. Three minutes and 17 seconds. 137 is 33. Remember I showed that through bars? Folks, this is the confirmation. No, I know that, that this is the truth of how this works. Just the little subtleties right there giving me the assurance that this we're dialed in to this expression of the code. So let's break down Azazel, folks, because that's the crow. Brandon Lee was clearly, you could see the tie into Azazel. The Brandon Lee, the story of Brandon Lee was coming down and being the killer and taking revenge, getting redemption for his girlfriend's death and his death coming up out of the grave, becoming the crow, the all seeing eye. So we get into this character, Azazel, folks. And this is the guy in the movie X-Men First Class. This is the actor that played Azazel. Jason Ian Fleming, right here. Now, folks, you know, if you've been following this great research, I did a decode from Pink Floyd and the Dark Side of the Moon. And in there, I showed from the movie Brain Damage that David Gilmour sang the song and he said, there's someone in my head, but it's not me. And that ends up becoming the number 54. A direct match of the guy casted to play Azazel in the movie X-Men First Class. Now, when you do his alchemology, his 16 letters, here are his 16 elements matching the numbers tied to the letters in his birth name. Going over to the trusty calculator, we get the number 110. 110, folks. And then we go right back to Brandon Lee. Well, actually, no, I'm going to take that back. We don't go back to that. <laughs> but anyway, you take that 110, folks, and there, that, this is where I went. I'm sorry. I went there for nothing. Folks, you take the 110 from this guy's complete alchemology, and then you bring it into the string of pi, folks. You see how there's no way man could code this. Because then you'd have to bring in Jason Ian Fleming into the conspiracy. His name through alchemology is 110 when you bring that into the string of pi. Look where it's found at the 174th decimal digit of pi. And we tie that right back once again. To that element that we found at the very beginning tied to Azazel in the 71 Lutetium which is tied to Lucifer it's right there folks you can't miss it you cannot and this guy they casted to play Azazel in the movie X-Men what do you think the odds would be that we could break it down all like this using all these layers, have it come out to this, which I've shown. I showed you why they named Neo Keanu Reeves because his name ends up linking to Neo Dimium. I showed that in my movie, my decode of John Wick. If you haven't seen my decode on John Wick, please check it out. I clearly showed that's where his name Neo comes from. But there it is, folks. There is the sinks. This is the code. And it's tied to this element right here called cadmium. Element 48. Cadmium. Right there. One, one, zero. And when you bring that into more layers, it starts to tell more of the story. You see, cadmium is derived from this word called cadmia. 
And notice it's linked to the number 14. And folks, you know, when you go to numerology, just to be very transparent, keep your eye on that Chaldean. It's tied to that word right there, G-O-D. It's tied to this word right there, the God of T-I-M-E, the God of time. It's tied to this word right there, Satan. Satan is the God of time. He's only got a short amount of time. You'd be pissed too if you realized that you only had a short amount of time in that story sense. Tied to cadmium. This is the symbology of cadmium. It means earth. Coming to earth. And this is where, you know, in the string of pi, like this is 48 protons, cadmium. Look at where it's attached to. It's attached to the number 51. What's the number 51? You go right back to the crow. It's tied to Brandon Lee's alchemology, 51, antimony. What's antimony? It's tied to Lucifer. Keeps going back to that, folks. It keeps, and the all-seeing eye, it keeps going back to this. keeps going back to this folks and you know this is the shape of the tetrahedron and the octahedron coming together perhaps to put the square inside there in the cube we're inside this cube this is saturn's magic square the number five have you seen the umbrella academy the number five he's a stone cold killer he's a teleporter that ties right into this decode i didn't even add that into the this decode the umbrella there's so much content folks you haven't seen the Umbrella Academy. Number five's the main character, young kid. Guess how old he is? I think he's 14. Five. In the very dead center. Perhaps tied to this geometrical shape, the octahedron and the square being inside that egg and us being inside there, folks. Inside the cube, the three-dimensional three cube of space. Now look at this going even further. I mean, this <laughs> this is this is where I, I just it's you add more layers. Here's more layers, folks, to make it even more complicated to try to pin this on man and saying that, yeah, man in Hollywood is really sitting down and they're completely knowing consciously of what's going on. Absolutely. Folks, that's absurd to think this. It's absolutely absurd to think that man is sitting down in Hollywood and they're using all these layers to code these movies consciously. Absolutely absurd and irresponsible to even think that. This guy's birthday was on September 25th, which of course is gold. Two plus five is seven. September's nine. 79, that's gold. The subtleties. Born in 1966. How many books in the Bible? 66. Master number 66, meaning hard to get, dysprosium. Subtleties, folks, but part of this guy's is code. He's the actor chosen to play Azazel. His card, September 25th. Let's be really transparent and show you that. Here's September. Going down to 25. Here it is, the Queen Hearts. Queen of Hearts is the 12th card in the deck. There it is, folks. 12th card, Queen of Hearts. What's the 12th card in the tarot? Well, naturally, it's the hangman. What's the hangman, folks? Use your common sense. Upside down, being hung upside down. St. Peter, <clears throat> his symbol's the upside down cross, being in the upside down world. Use your common sense when you look at these layers. Man could never code this like this, ever. It's too complicated. Here's more proof, folks. The Queen of Hearts was the originator of the tarot, and this is the called the Queen of Cups. What card is it, folks? Oh, it's just card number 48 tied to cadmium. Going back to cadmia. Going back to the 110 and the 174 and lutetium tied to this guy's alchemology. The guy they casted to play Azazel in X-Men First Class. How about that, folks? Man could never code this like this, folks. Not 
freaking possible. Look at this. It's so let me be very transparent. Here are the, here's the spread on the tarot. And there it is. Card number 40. And I'll give, if you folks, if you want these graphics, I've sent them to thousands of people. Just send me an email and I'll send them to you. If you want to start decoding through this methodology, I'll send them to you. My email is decodeyourreality at gmail.com and I'll send them to you. But here it is, folks. There's card 48, the queen of cups, queen of cups, queen of hearts, this guy's birthday, card 48, element 48. How about that? But you think man, people that still, you think man's coding this? Do you realize how crazy that sounds? All of these layers having to be syncretized? Folks, it is not possible. Getting to the comic books of Azazel, and here is the guy who, or the guys, Chuck Beckham and Sean Phillips, right there, created by, this is what I found right there. I think his name is Chuck Austin. Let me go back and double check this. Make sure I got this right. Yeah, see, Chuck Beckham, born Chuck Beckham. That's why I ended up using that right there. But it's Chuck Beckham and Sean Phillips. That's the number 87, folks, through numerology. And where is the 87 in the string of pi? Tied to that number 48. You see, folks, it's, there's no way. Folks, you, then you bring in these guys to bring into the conspiracy, to try to mock you. Pull the woolly over your eyes. It's the Jesuits. Maybe it's the Masons that are doing all this, folks. And they're trying to mock you. Folks, this is all organic. I don't care whoever else is out there that thinks that it's inorganic. They're wrong. Period. You can argue all day long, folks. But if you want to argue against it, prove this stuff wrong. I stand by my research. I do more than the average bear. And I'm not putting this out there to try to be right and try to prove everybody else wrong. I'm trying to show you what I found in my discoveries, folks. This is not done by man. Man is being used, period. Too many moving parts. The two guys who created Azazel equal 87, tied to the number 48 in the string of pi, tied to the element cadmium. Who's tied to the guy they cast as a play from the movie? Are you freaking kidding me? It's tied to his alchemology, the 110? Folks, this is all organic. Period. Man is expressing the blueprint. They're not in control of the blueprint. There are the two elements that make up this number 48. It's 87 and the number 88, which is tied to... Francium and radium, Ra, 88, Ra. Then we bring into it, now we get Egyptian mythology into this. Is Ra controlling cadmium, which is controlling Azazel? Is Azazel just the killer in this world? A lot of people get killed. Then it comes into this right here, folks, called The Watchers. The story of The Watchers. which is, you know, talked about in the Book of Enoch, which came out in and discovered supposedly in the year 1945. But Azazel, through the original spelling found through the biblical sense, this is kind of where it originated from, folks. Again, I'm going off of as close to the source as I can, not saying it's true, just decoding it. But here is... The title it goes by. Instead of Azazel, it's this title right there. Here it is through the Hebrew. Look at what it equals, folks. 64. How many codons in our DNA? 64. How many squares in a chessboard? 64. 64 numbers in the I Ching. Here are the six elements that match up with the six letters, that match up with the six numbers of Azazel's name in the Hebrew, the original spelling of it. 
going over to the trustee calculator and adding all these up, folks, you get the number 132. It's tied to this element right here called cesium. Element number 55, master number 55. Now, have you, if you've ever seen the show, the great show, which I'm going to highly suggest you watch it if you haven't seen it. It's called Dark on Netflix and their opinion on how things work. That show included a lot of time travel, teleportation, time tra travel, folks. Do you see how all this, how is this possible? A separate component that has nothing to do with the show Dark. We're talking theology and Hollywood. Yet here we are and they're in bed together. Tied directly together. There it is. Cesium. Used in the show Dark. Cesium 137. What's 137? It's the 33rd prime number. But it's tied to this 132, tied to Azazel's original name in the Hebrew, tied to Cesium. There it is, 132. It has several weights. These are bridges to show you the connection. So, you know, you get into the watchers, folks. And this may be what's going on, folks. We may have handlers down here on earth, you know, the fallen angels, that whole story. Well, you know, hey, they, they control you remotely. Everybody's got somebody controlling. Everybody's got a handler. That's possible, folks. Can't rule it out. You can't rule that whole situation out. It's possible. You know, people believe in angels and demons. Why is it so far-fetched to think that one of those angels or demons is controlling you? And you're just a mirror of it. You're just the slowed down version in the physical matter called whatever your name is, Logan, your avatar, and you're being controlled remotely by something outside of the physical. Why would that be so far-fetched to believe? Notice that, you know, watchers are 26, God equals 26, tied to iron, I showed that, tied to teleportation. Teleportation is 56. Iron has an atomic weight of 56. Iron is the 26th element. You see how all that ties together, folks? So in the book of Enoch, the watchers of the angels dispatched to earth, go both good and bad angels and demons, to watch over the humans. Watch over the humans, maybe even control them. We're being controlled. When you do the alchemy of the word watcher, seven letters. I mean, remember, Azazel, seven, 71, watcher. Here are the six of the seven elements that make up the numbers and letters from Watcher. Going over to the trusty calculator, look at what number you get, folks. 55, tied to going right back to Cesium again, going right back to this show called Dark, going right back to the time travel, and time travel means teleportation. Here's the original spelling in Hebrew, Watcher. It's the number 70. 70 in the string of pi ends up linking up to the number 96. 96 is yin-yang. Let me show you that. 70, you go right here, go to the, here's the number 70. Right there, 96 decimal digit, yin-yang. 70. Doing the alchemology of the word watcher and the original spelling of the Hebrew. Here it is, using the trusty calculator, adding up those five elements, doing the alchemy of them, the alchemology from this numerology, you get the number 139. It's tied to this element right here called Cerium, the god of agriculture. It's got a several atomic weights. One of them is pi, 141. But here it is, folks, when you go to the elements of the periodic table and you look at that element, Cerium, it's right here. It's the god of agriculture. The Roman goddess of, agri the goddess of agriculture, Ceres. 
And you'll notice when you go down and you look at some of these oxidation states and isotopes, there's the pi, 141. It's right there. And it's not only just 141, but the abundance gives you another clue. Here's another extension, 1111. How about that? Tied to pi. Tied to the one, there's the 137, 33rd prime number. And there it is. I should have just looked. There is the blown up. There it is, folks. It's right there. Isotope 140. It's got an atomic mass of 139. There it is. Look at what the abundance of it is, folks. Look at what the abundance, the natural abundance percentage, the Royal Society of Chemistry decided to display for all of us. It's 80 freaking eight. What's the 88? Time travel. We just got done showing it. Time travel. Watchers. Cesium. Time travel. Teleportation. Azazel. Watchers. And as you, most of you know, folks, the, the, I've shown this, been showing it so much. Remote control equals the number 58. Puppet master equals the number 58. Folks, it's telling us what's the story of what I believe to be the story, the real story. Tied to this watcher, tied to Azazel's part of the watchers. So folks, what is it that you saw during this presentation? What did you see? And again, folks, listen, I stand firm by my research. I stand extremely firm in my research. I do a lot of research, a lot. And I'm not just decoding the mainstream like some people are, news and sports, and blaming it on some organization. Folks, I'm decoding sacred geometry and how this, how, and physics and science, how really are, and Taurus fields and getting into things that Santos talks about. And I'm finding the same patterns. So it's clear when you use your common sense and logic that man's not coding this. We got to get this right, folks. We got to get this right. So anyway, folks, what is it you saw? That's all I got for today. My name is Logan. This is Decode Your Reality. And I sincerely thank each and every one of you for watching.